Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. In a surprising move, Premier Tim Houston has called a snap provincial election in Nova Scotia to be held on November 26th, aiming to secure a second term for his progressive conservative government. This decision comes despite Houston's own 2020 legislation that fixed the next election date in the province to July 15th, 2025. At dissolution, Houston's progressive conservatives held a strong majority of 34 seats in the 55-seat legislature. 14 seats were held by the Nova Scotia Liberals, six seats are held by the Nova Scotia NDP, and there was one independent in the House. The announcement is particularly significant for municipalities, as this election date coincides with the opening day of the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities Fall Convention. Representing over 370 elected officials across all 49 of the province's municipalities, the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities serves as a unified voice for municipal issues in Nova Scotia. The Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities President Carolyn Bolivar Getson shared her insights with us on this election call, emphasizing the importance of municipal concerns in this election cycle. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. President, thank you so much for sitting down with me this morning and talking about the snap election call that Tim Houston uh, uh, went to the lieutenant governor on Sunday and asked for, and he received it, which is scheduled for November 26, 2024. Uh, just general, first off, uh, municipalities are in a change themselves as they just had their own uh, municipal elections. This is uh, going to divide some of their attention, but are municipalities prepared to ask the tough questions during this provincial election to potentially see where the party is? Well, I always think municipalities are prepared to ask the tough questions uh, during provincial federal elections. Uh, we work very closely with our provincial counterparts, but the one thing, the NSFM is a nonpartisan organization committed to advancing our members' interests and any government formed following the election. So we may have to adjust how we work or how we do things, but we definitely uh, need to stay nonpartisan and make sure that we're able to work with whoever is elected. And keeping in mind that what are the our membership encompasses all 49 municipalities in Nova Scotia, representing uh, diverse community needs. Uh, this province from end to end have many, many different uh, priorities. So we need to take everyone's into consideration. What What are some of those concerns that you believe that municipalities are going to be needing to be addressed during this election first? And then we'll talk about after the election. But during this election, what are the key priorities that NSFM and also your members are going to be wanting to hear from the party leaders? So the NSFM changed the way it did business. We went through a restructuring um, and we set up uh, advisory committees. And the advocacy priorities and key issues are managed by advisory committees, aligned with our five core areas of municipal interest, which are reviewed every five years to address the evolving needs of the membership. So the membership voted on these. This is the priorities that they have put forward. And whether or not the provincial government changes or not, these are the issues that will come forward. So one of those committees is equity and community well-being. And this is focusing on amplifying uh, underrepresented voices and fostering collaborative collaboration with diverse community stakeholders. So when things come in as a topic from municipalities, they're then put into one of these uh, committees 
to see where they best fit. So if it would be that one, it would go there. Another one is climate change. And this is monitoring the municipal progress on adaptation, uh, particularly uh, in relation to coastal protection. But anything climate related would flow into that committee. Uh, municipal autonomy, enhancing municipal council's ability to make locally beneficial decisions. So again, that's another one. Uh, municipal infrastructure. We've heard loud and clear across uh, the province that municipal infrastructure is top of mind and that we need more dollars flowed into these uh, categories in order for municipalities to continue to keep up with the uh, progress or the population boom that we're experiencing here and the development and the lack or the need for more housing. So municipalities are on side to do that but they need to have the infrastructure in place to be able to move forward. And they need help from our provincial and federal counterparts to do that. Uh, public safety would be the last one and that there is supporting initiatives uh, like the creation of the vulnerable sector registry. And that's something that we've been pushing hard for to try to get established here in the province. So that's one thing. So again, Municipalities put forward uh, areas of concern in their areas. They're put, streamed into one of these categories and made sure that it is a provincial something that is not municipality uh, specific so that it does relate to more than one municipality in general. And they're streamed into these categories and then move forward. Infrastructure seems to be a top priority for not just uh, larger urban centers. There are a lot of rural municipalities and smaller villages who are dealing with a lot of infrastructure issues. And when I say infrastructure issues, I mean wastewater treatment, building pipes to or upgrading old age. Is there a number that the uh, NSFM is looking for from the next government? Because when I talk to your counterparts at SUMA, at AB Muni's, at AMO, uh, at MNL, they say that their infrastructure deficit of municipalities being able to address the infrastructure that they currently have, not just including the infrastructure that they need to keep up with growth in their own provinces, is around the 300 to $200 million mark every year that they're looking for from the provincial government. Is there a particular area of, I, I hate to say number because it all comes down to numbers at the end of the day though, but is there a particular number that you're looking for from the next government to say, the province needs to step up with this amount of money each year to address the municipal backlog that we have for infrastructure? So the municipal backlog and infrastructure, uh, if we were to factor all 49 municipalities, I know it's hundreds of millions of dollars across the province. I know of small municipalities that are faced with 10 million uh, right now. Um, pipes in the ground, uh, very, very important for development. Uh, developers want to develop in rural areas as well, but in most cases, there's not central sewer and water. And that's what they're looking for. So the more that we can expand central sewer and water around the peripheral of towns and smaller towns to get that out so that there is that hub and concentration and at a smaller cost, hopefully. Um, everyone can't put pipes in the ground. Nova Scotia is very rural in many parts. So we need to have solutions that work for the demographics and for the geography that we're faced with. So I believe that there definitely are solutions out there. There's many different types of systems and so on uh, that can be uh, put in place, but developers particularly are looking for areas where there are currently capacity to build. And they want to walk really? in and be able to start their construction and have that capacity for sewer and water. So on the flip side of that, you talk about infrastructure needs, you talk about climate change, you talk about the five pillars that your advocacy work that you're going to be doing during this campaign, which you mentioned beforehand. Um, 
It all comes down to housing as well, though, because that is the big macro issue that when I talk to members across uh, Nova Scotia, housing seems to be a big concern, whether it's in Bridgewater, whether it's in Westview, whether it's in Pictou County, it seems that housing is a key priority. Now, the best line I ever heard when uh, uh, talking about housing with a municipal leader came from Scott Pierce, the former president of FCM. He said, you don't want to see me as a mayor build a house. You want the uh, the workers to build those houses. But the infrastructure you do build as the municipal leaders. If the next provincial government, whoever it may be, does not address the infrastructure challenge, could you see a stagnation in your province from a municipal other provinces because they just don't have the housing supply in the province to address the backlog that you need? So again, we look at the infrastructure and the ability to be able to build houses. Uh, yes, the more rural you go, people have on-site sewer and they have their drilled wells uh, for their own capacity. But from a large capacity, when we're talking multi-unit dwellings, developers want central sewer and water. Without that, and municipalities cannot do that alone. It will take a long time for municipalities to be able to keep up with supply demand right now. We need uh, those extra dollars coming in. And the revenue is coming into the province and to the federal government because our population is booming. So we need to see more and more of those dollars uh, back to municipalities so that we can reinvest into housing and addressing some of this. And no, municipalities typically are not building houses but we're putting policies in place and infrastructure in place to make it a favorable place for developers to come. And that's our role as municipalities to make sure that that happens. Do you think you've done a good enough job? And I say that as the Royal you, as all your collective members have done a good enough job to make it enticing for developers to come in and build housing. I think that we're seeing development happening across the province. Um, but is there need for more? Absolutely. We're not meeting uh, the gap that we have right now in our housing. So the more, I guess, prepared we can be. And it's one thing to say that, yes, okay, the federal government gives you $15 million for sewer and water projects. You've got to build them then. You've got to build them. So there's still that gap. So we are behind in being able to address the issue that's front right now. I want to turn to policing because this is a priority for a lot of rural municipalities in Nova Scotia. In the province of Nova Scotia, there was a uh, tragedy of national uh, relevance and that it was in Colchester County. What are you looking for on the policing file to address the uh, policing issues? Or uh... I think there's a lot of work to be done on the policing file. I really do. Uh, we do have a committee that is set up um, that is dealing with this, and they will continue to work with uh, provincial and uh, with the FCM to advance those concerns back to where they need to go from a um, national police force, our provincial police force. Uh, we also have municipal police forces that are struggling as well with being able to keep up with um, the amount of policing that is required and the cost of policing. And every time there is, well, when the inquiry was carried out, there were recommendations put back. And with those recommendations came additional costs to municipalities to put in place for policing. Um, Again, there's still so much work to be done there. And this is something that the provincial government and the federal government is going to have to work very closely together with municipalities to address. What are you looking for more boots on the ground? It's not only boots on the ground. It's not only boots on the ground. A lot of these recommendations came with equipment changes, came with different things that are required throughout. So it's also the cost to be able to outfit an officer and to do uh, the actual job. 
but it's definitely going to take a different uh, look as we move forward. The last area before we turn to what what you want from the next government is a climate change. Uh, coastal erosion has been the top priority for NSFM over the last few years. In our conversations that you and I have had beforehand, it did come up, and I've had it with a few of your members as well. Um, what specifically are you looking for when it comes to addressing the coastal erosion? Because, uh, well, last time I checked a map, Nova Scotia is a pretty coastal uh, province where it's surrounded by a lot of coast. There's definitely a lot of uh, coastline in Nova Scotia, there's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. And when the provincial government, uh, current provincial government, made a statement uh, that they were putting in place the mapping tool so that people uh, would see where they lie in relation to that zone and how many years it would take for them to be uh, basically underwater. I, is how that mapping uh, tool works. So when you look at coastal protection, um, it's definitely a hot topic. I would have liked to have seen that the province was putting across um, one glove for everyone. Municipalities now are tasked with creating their own bylaw uh, to put in place or to allow residents to continue to build based on the information that they have. And some people will definitely not build based on the tool that was provided to them. That information, they did not have uh, the ability to see that before. So that is good information. It's good information for all municipalities to have too, uh, from the LIDAR mapping and so on that was carried out. So that's a step, but we do have a uh, climate navigator that's working with NSFM and they're working with municipalities to make sure that they can assist them in whatever avenues they need, whether that is to put a model bylaw in place so that that can be shared throughout the province. But that information is currently ongoing right now and that's work is ongoing. So they will continue to do that. Um, I'm sure that on the doorsteps, coastal protection is going to take many different uh, faces because there's people who want coastal development, uh, coastal protection, and there's people that do not want. So you're going to hear it both ways. Uh, so I, I really think uh, climate change is real. We've had this conversation before. Uh, we only need to go back to the floods in July of last year or to the tropical storms, fingers crossed. We actually uh, escaped hurricane season this year. Uh, so it's something that we typically do have an active hurricane season now. And those waters and that storm surge and those high tides are all definitely affecting uh, where people build along the coast and how much flooding they're experiencing just from high tides. I want to ask sort of the, the local candidate issue now, because you have five issues uh, advocacy works that you the provincial leaders can address what should your members and i say the mayors the re the mayors the councillors from across nova scotia be asking their local candidates because they will be knocking on their doors their party leader probably will not be knocking on the door but their local candidates will what should the local mayors the councillors be asking of their next local representative to address from a municipal standpoint, because we we you don't have a premier until you have the majority of the seat uh, the seats in the house, and the majority of the seats are the local members. So, what should the local members, municipal members, be asking their local MLA candidates? So, some of the priorities that have come in from our municipal units, and some of the things that are really top of mind, is the vulnerable persons uh, registry. It's also expanding cell phone coverage. And I know the provincial government has said they're going to put up more towers and so on. There's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of gaps with cell service in Nova Scotia. And that's something that you hear continually on the doorsteps. And that's something that does need to be addressed. Uh, modernizing municipalities, respecting their autonomy. Again, those are things from a municipal point of view that you need to know what that picture looks like. 
and advancing can, provincial Can I interject for a second? What do you yes. mean by autonomy? What do you mean by autonomy? Because when, when I when I spoke to Suma about autonomy for their municipal provincial election, they gave me an explanation and I said, okay, that's understandable. Are you asking the provincial government to basically stay in their lane and not interject into uh, municipal affairs? I think municipalities need to know exactly what the process is. I think there needs to be a clear process so that municipalities if they do choose to move forward, what is that? Is that a plebiscite? Is that um, the council making the decision? What is the process that allows municipalities to move forward? Uh, who best knows their own finances than municipalities? Who best knows how to uh, service, whether that's recreation, whether that's building inspections, whatever that is, through shared services or whatever. But what is the process how do municipalities go ahead? It's been called everything from collaboration to amalgamation to uh, shared services to different things. And I guess, what is? And is that just left to municipalities to decide on their own or is there that provincial? Uh, because it has taken different roles here and there has been, um, the province has stepped in, but I guess a clear picture of what that looks like for municipalities is important. Understandable. Now, this election is going to be taking place, I think it's day one or day two of the upcoming fall NSFM convention. So I'm assuming you're not going to hear from the political leaders as you traditionally do, because they're going to be on the campaign trail. But um from the next provincial government because you may not have that moment where you're going to be able to bring the party leaders in front of all your members. So what exactly are you looking for from the next provincial government to wrap up what we've already talked about in the last 20 minutes? So I, again, the timing uh, with our conference is definitely off for sure, <laughs> but I, I don't think that that was their uh, reasoning for uh, they, the Tim Houston should have thought of that, right? <laughs> It was nice that they did wait till after municipal elections were finished so that there wasn't a cross of signs everywhere to uh, confuse the electorate. So from that perspective, but moving forward, I think that whoever is elected and at that point in time, it's going to be, uh, you're going to know what's going on. So it's working with that government and it will be the spring conference that you'll actually be able to bring those government officials to the membership to have that conference um, in the spring. So whichever government is there will definitely have the opportunity as they have in the past. And the invitations uh, have gone uh, for the fall conference. Uh, maybe some of the local in the area will still show up and uh, it may be a good opportunity to do that. It is still early days from the election call. We're recording this on October 31st. The election was called on a Sunday the week that of the week. Um, I've been watching this election unfold already, and it seems like a lot of municipal councillors or former municipal councillors or even current municipal councillors are putting their name forward. Are you happy that you might have a strong municipal voice in the next legislature to address some of these issues that you've been talking about if they are elected in on uh, November 25th, 26th, sorry. Oh, I think that whenever you have that municipal perspective at the provincial table or at the federal table, it definitely adds a layer of expertise and understanding of what the issues are. And that voice, it's not like you turn a switch and you go from municipal to provincial. You still know what the issues are. So it gives you that opportunity to definitely bring those um, ideas to the table and maybe speak to them from a different perspective than what has been there before. So anytime, like I said, that's that actually adds value to provincial governments when they're able to have that municipal voice at the table when someone chooses to move to a different level of government. We've talked about a lot of things over the last 20 minutes, but I want to give final words to you. What should the people of Nova Scotia think about before they go into that ballot box and cast that X beside the candidate of their choice? Well, when people make a choice on a candidate, they definitely want to look at the person that's representing them at the local level and at the provincial level. What is that mandate? 
And is that mandate in line with where your views are? Um, when governments choose to go to the polls, they want a clear mandate that they are headed in the right direction, that this is where they want to go and they want the people to support that mandate. So I hope that they will look at that and have the opportunity to review and ask questions. And um, there is definitely people door knocking and out there. Uh, write down your questions. Write down your questions. Ask all three, four, five, however many candidates are in your uh, just uh, writing to uh, answer them so that you know and make sure they are speaking from the provincial approach because at the end of the day, the province has a mandate. They have a blueprint that they are going to use uh, for the next four years. And I think that that's important for people to understand that piece. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button because over the next three weeks, we will be sitting down with mayors and councillors from across Nova Scotia to be hearing from directly from them about what they want from the next provincial government. So you will not want to miss those conversations. Until next time, stay engaged, stay informed, and we'll be back here on Municipal Affairs. Until then, see you later.